Hey everyone, this is Darren with Crazy Minnow Studio, and uh, welcome to the ninth video. In this video, since we just released Salsa 2.2.2, I'm going to go over some of the new features in probably the next two or three videos. In this video, we are going to start off with events. I think that'll be good. But first, let's get this Salsa instance updated to the latest version. And you'll notice that we get a couple of new script files here. And these are for the events. One is for the event controller and one is for the salsa events. Let's import this. All right, so you see this new folder pop in and this has our new templates. And these are just a basically a starting point for you if you're using events and you're not really sure what to do with them. Let me go ahead and pull this up. In this particular example, we're grabbing an instance to salsa or we're providing a slot for it anyway. And then on enable and on disable, we're subscribing and unsubscribing to these events. Started salsaing and stopped salsaing. And these events, when they fire, are going to pipe into these delegates. And uh, they're down below here. So on started salsaing is, is going to fire off this method. And it's going to receive the sender and then some arguments that we will provide, which I believe there's only uh, one argument. And that is the salsa instance. So what we've got here is, uh, here's our arguments, E, and it's checking the salsa instance, which is one of the arguments in that object. And we're going to compare that to the salsa instance that we link up in the inspector or that we provide via some other means. And then we'll do a debug log whenever this is fired. We'll pump out the salsa instance that has uh, sent the message and that it stops salsing. Looks like I put stop before started, but that, that's okay. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And of course you can put whatever code, and I wouldn't recommend putting these debug logs in here, but you can put whatever code you want in these conditionals here. And you don't even have to have conditionals. If you don't have a conditional, it'll respond to any salsa that emits this, and you may or may not want that. So uh, that's how that works. Let me go ahead and pull up the other one. And this one basically is the same thing. So uh, what this does provide though, is a string that you can use in the component to do a filter. And so it's sort of like the salsa instance, except it's just a string and you'll actually input that string. Think of it as a secret code or something that you put in on your expression component and uh, you'll be able to filter it out in the event. So you can see in on enable and disable, we are subscribing and unsubscribing to these four events, uh, animation starting, animation on, animation ending and animation off. And, uh, and then I've got four methods down here that uh, are delegates to that uh, particular event. So it's going to send the sender and uh, the arguments that we have defined. And the only argument in there right now is this event name. And then we're going to compare that to our component event name, which again, we have specified here. Let's go ahead and kick this off. So let's uh, let's go ahead and add the salsa event template script here. You see it says we're looking for this particular salsa. So we didn't describe in this uh, script to actually go out and grab a salsa. So we have to make sure that we link it up. So we can either drag from that game object or uh, or we could you know drag from right here. And so we're linked up to this. So what this will do in our console when salsa starts talking and stops talking, we'll get these debug statements pop out here. And there is a setting that we can adjust to make this more or less sensitive. So right now it's set on three, the silence threshold. On three, it's pretty good. It's pretty responsive, but not too responsive. So you'll catch larger breaks in speech, but you won't catch breaks like every word or whatnot. And if you want even bigger breaks to be the delineating criteria, then you'll increase this some more. Basically what this corresponds to, this number, is the number of update delay cycles. And this update delay, you'll, if you'll recall from one of our previous videos, is how long uh, in between salsa audio analysis cycles. So we would be looking for silence. Whoops, 26, that'd be a lot. We'd be looking for silence in this instance, four times this 0.08 seconds. So basically uh, about a third of a second. So we'll put it back to three and let's go ahead and run this and see if this works. Salsa, simple automated lip sync approximation. 
The unique technology Stop. behind Salsa Started. provides high quality lip sync automation for Stop. your 2D Started. and 3D character models. You can see models. these counts right here. Salsa processes audio files in real time with zero requirement for pre Okay, so we can see how that works. We can process basically when Salsa starts talking and when it stops talking. And you probably would want this to wait even further. And uh, so let's demonstrate that. We'll go ahead and start it. Salsa. Simple and then I'm going to increase this. The unique technology behind Salsa provides high quality lip sync automation for your 2D and 3D character models. Salsa processing. See, so we're still catching those bigger breaks. With zero requirement for pre processing or shape mapping your audio. There's Results one. Are All right. Let's crank it up a little bit more. Animations and eliminate Notice we didn't stop on that one. Mapping. With its low price See? Point and minimal so we can control Salsa what we treat as silence and stops. Off, and then this will. Right, let me turn this off. And, uh, and then this will determine when the events send. Now you can also actually pull, let me go ahead and start this again. You can actually pull, Salsa. let me turn on show analysis value. There's a property that you can pull, uh, salsa.issalsing, and you can see that it is indicating actively whether he is speaking or not. So you would use that if you need to actively check. And if you want to passively check, you want to be told, then you would use the events. OK, now let's go ahead and go over the events in the emotes. Now, these are going to be events inside our emote configuration. And uh, we can add this to any emote or a new emote. And I'm going to go ahead and configure a new one. And we will call this an event. And now we need to give it an identifier. This is our secret code. And we're going to call this coolness. All right. And so what will happen is we, uh, we filter. And again, we don't have to filter. But if you recall, when we actually fire one of these events, we're going to pass the argument in, and then we're going to check that event name and compare it to what we have put on this particular template. So let me pull this back up. We don't have the template on anything right now. Let me go ahead and turn this one off, and we'll add this event template here. Come on, there we go. All right, here's our event template, and we see that we have this name here. Again, you can implement this however you want. This is just an example. So our name is, uh, all right. And what we will see is an animation timing here. And this will correspond to, let me pull this up. All right, so let's go to our documentation and we want to look in further reading and events. And we've got an image in here that describes our animation phases. And, and then all of this is documented in here as well when they actually occur. So we will see these four events. I'll go ahead and pull this back up here. We've got animation starting, animation on, animation ending, animation off. So if we look at this, we'll see animation starting. So at point one, that's when that event will fire. And when the on animation ends, we're fully animated, that's point two. That is when animation on will fire. And then animation ending, is this point. If we had any hold, this may or may not be a time value. And then animation off will be 0.4. So we're going to demonstrate this using a repeater. And uh, we'll have this start immediately. Oh, this is another new feature here. So we'll just leave this on immediately. And uh, let's see, I think that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and flip back over to our console and make sure that I did turn off the salsa so we're not saying. In fact, you know what? I don't even need to have a salsa for this. So I'm going to turn that off and turn the audio off so we can kind of focus on what we're doing here. All right, so what we'll see is we'll see an event fire immediately, and that will say that the animation has started, and then, well, it'll say whatever's in here. So uh, animation starting, uh, fired on animation, animation starting for, and then it's going to say what that, uh, that little secret code word is that we used. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this started. OK, so we immediately got the on animation starting, and then it was on after a second. And then it held for two seconds, and then it was off. 
Let's go ahead and space these out just a little bit more so it's easier to see. We're going to do, uh, let's just say three, five, three, and we'll give it a little bit of delay here. So this will be the delay between cycles. Uh, so after we have reached animation off, then it will, it will wait this number of seconds. We'll go ahead and give it two before it fires uh, animation starting again and starts to cycle all over again. And I'm going to remove the collapse so we can see these better as they're populating. So we got our initial one. Let me pull this up so we can reference it. And then three seconds later, we got the animation on. We're going to wait five seconds. We're going to start the ending animation. Two seconds, we're going to end it. Or it's three seconds, sorry. And then another two seconds later, we start the process all over again. After five seconds, we hit that. So that is the way the events work. And again, you can put this in combination. It can run on its own and time things. I mean, you could call this as a manual emote. Um, you can have it as part of your emphasizers. Uh, it could be added on, uh, say, this focus here. And uh, every time this one is called, then the events would process and you could do something with it. Entirely up to you. Your imagination is the only limit on what uh, you can do with this. Anyway, I think that is about it on events. Look forward to seeing what you create. See you in the next video.